Welcome back to Swatches Live Stream 52. This is part two. Uh, I took a break from part one to fix some stream settings, uh, but we will continue the review of the Gilded Guardian art submissions. Uh, we'll give a minute just to make sure that we try to fix some of those problems, get some feedback from the uh, live chat. Uh, before we jump into that, so if you're watching in recording, you might want to scrub ahead a little bit uh, as we need to make sure we've got some of these tech problems fixed first. So I adjusted it from 1920-1080 down to 1280-720 and uh, just lowered some of the compression speeds um, so it's not having to do such a high amount of... Uh, image uh, information being sent. Hopefully not too much was lost. Uh, we're gonna be picking up with Daniel Ray's image, but everything looks green from OBS. It's not giving me any coding problems. And everybody says it's looking smooth over here. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, when and if uh, things pick up enough, I'll try to get another machine uh, frankly, I shouldn't be trying to stream on this machine. It's it's about eight years old or something. It's getting fairly old at this point. But, uh, yep. Anyway. Okay. Oh, we need to get Photoshop back open. Yeah, I should take a lot of the strain off by going down to 720. Oh, I should have taken the opportunity to go get something to drink across the street. Anyway, I didn't. We'll make it. Yeah, I'll just, you know, close Photoshop, try to clear that cache of memory in case that was slowing things stuff down too. Okay. All right, so we're at Daniel Ray's. Um, yeah, this is one of those where didn't really overthink it. I don't think you necessarily need to overthink this one as far as just layout. It is clearly about this creature uh, and supporting actor word goes to the surrounding uh, and you know, what's going on here. Uh, I don't think this is something you definitely need to tilt the canvas for because it's not something that should feel dangerous. It's not ominous. So let's, let's go ahead and pull that back a bit. He's getting a bit too leany there. Uh, for a lot of them, yeah, I do say tilting the canvas can be a good way to give yourself a little more vertical room, add a bit of drama to the scene, but that's not what this guy is about. This guy is, he's not an ominous character. He's, he's a powerful character, but he's, you know, he's a, he's a good guy. He, he's, he's more like a, a nice horse, unicorn. Kind of think of him as a unicorn or a sphinx. They're not bad creatures. They're good creatures, and they're generally peaceable creatures, as long as you don't cross them. Uh, Matt says, sorry, my image didn't work. Oh, no, Matt, that's just the... Uh, it's a PNG file, and PNG files don't always come up as a, a full thumbnail, but your whole image is there. We'll get to it. Yeah, we didn't lose anything. Okay, so say that we do that, and now he feels more stable, less aggressive, uh, which is a, a better um, way to convey this sort of character. And really leaning into the gold, uh, that's fine. Uh, I like the idea of the books. The books are kind of cool, but because you do have stonework back here, it's easy to kind of get lost in that. When you get it small, you just think that's a pile of stones. I'm gonna suggest if you do wanna have books then I have a couple of them laying, you know, other directions so that we have, uh, you know, a clue that these are books. Maybe he even has, uh, you know, maybe he's a big reader. Maybe he has a book that he's, that's propped up. 
And that's what he does to pass the time. He just loves reading. So uh, he, you know, he always has a couple of books here that's opened up that he's reading while he's waiting for people to come, right? Now that would add, that, okay, this is an example of adding a bit more narrative without compromising what the scene is about. And it's one of the second reads. I, I say that again. The second read about it should be this guy and him, his scene, first read. And then the second read is, oh, oh, there's books. He's reading books. That's kind of cool. But you don't want to upstage the character with mounds of books. So you look at the scene and go, oh, it's a bunch of books with a kind of cat creature in the background. That would be the opposite way to do it. Okay, uh, so that can be one way to expound it. Um, as far as, let's pull in here. Everybody can get a, a better look at this dude. Uh, I kind of like it. Da, da. This is feeling a bit too armor-like and less flower-like. He should be beautiful. He shouldn't feel necessarily like he's a warrior, like he's got a bunch of armor on him. So can we make this more flower-like. Make sure that you're going and actually looking at images of flowers. Uh, nature as a <laughs> plethora of beautiful, wonderful, delicate shapes. And so go look at them and see what you can do. Let some of that inspire you to uh, come up with something a little more interesting than just bunches of bands of armor-like, you know, pieces hanging over him. Let's do something else. Maybe uh, you come up with a better silhouette. Uh, right now he has the juggernaut silhouette, just that. That's his silhouette, which is pretty dull. Uh, imagine if you were to change the silhouette up so that he had, I don't know, like a big pedal here and a big pedal here and a big pedal here. And then he had a series of like pedals coming off of there. And then he has uh, a couple of them coming down in the front. And then off of the shoulder, he's got some longer ones that are kind of twisty. That's a more interesting set of shapes than just this. So look at that. Um, this, I think these paws all need to be turned a little bit. He's facing three quarters that way. Like he's facing that way. But the paw is coming straight at us. This paw is coming straight at us. Uh, it needs to be a bit more like that one. We have the side view of that one a little bit. We still need a side view of that one, too. Think of it like a cube, right? Uh, so, you know, more on that lines. Uh, okay. Uh, make sure you get a reference for the background forced. Oh, it's starting to rain again. <laughs> there is not a change. More rain. Uh, I was going to look at some of this stuff in environment. So going out and looking at environments, uh, lots of good options here. Uh, I just pulled up some, like, if this was me, these are some that I would go and find. It has a golden mane. Maybe it's a golden scene. Maybe he's the guardian of the autumn forest. And so you could have these beautiful golden autumn sort of colors behind him. And then the rest of the area is, you know, green-like. Um, for a scene, here's a good example of like if you wanted like a natural arch and the rest of it's stone, that's cool. Uh, also, just seeing a forest peeking through, that's kind of neat. Uh, with the stones, different ways that you could add some color and texture to the stones. Look at something like that. Um, that's a really neat scene. And with the lightning and come across that, uh, that was from Albany. Uh, that was just their little stock photo preview. Um, but that's neat. Uh, adding ironwork, something like this, to your arch or to your wall is cool. Having a variety of different things like bricks and stonework, that's a good combination. Uh, if you're finding it hard, Swatches has some good vibrance videos. Oh, you talked to somebody else just mentioned. Okay. Uh, okay. And, or maybe the whole thing is covered in ivy. And, it's almost like a hidden archway where you have to pass through the ivy in order to get to the forest, like secret garden sort of thing. 
Uh, here is a wonderful image of a place that I don't, I don't know where this is. I've pulled it off of Google. So there we go. Uh, natural art. You could probably Google it and find it. A uh, good example of what it looks like. And this is well balanced. So the, the background is very lit and bright. Uh, and then the foreground has all the shadow in it. Uh, so something like that. And also just how you want to compose your scene that you can see through the archway. Uh, maybe it's a beautiful, colorful forest, not just green. Something on that line could be really cool. Or an Asian-style garden. Something like that. It could be very manicured. Uh, that's a really wonderful scene. I love this. Uh, Jane Jay, I guess, did this. Uh, beautiful, towering, monstrously big trees in the background. Maybe it's that sort of thing. I love this little part with that light's coming through there. So make sure you're, you're coming up with at least a reference or two for what you're going to be doing for the background and how that's, that light's going to be hitting it. Uh, then something else that I've said before, uh, I'll say it again on this one, which is you don't always need to paint the light. You paint the thing that the light is hitting. Uh, for a reminder, a kind of refresher on that, go watch the videos posted on the YouTube on the Daniel Ray's paint overs. Right? Uh, one of them should have the cover of this image. I forget the exact name of it, which video it is. But it has this image, and that's what I talk about. This is where you're trying to paint the light. This is where you paint the thing being lit. So you get a feeling of light with uh, the way that the light is hitting this, and then creating the atmosphere back here. Here is you're just you're trying to paint light by painting light beams and just blowing everything out with uh, vibrancy and, and saturation. So here it could be where the light hitting him is almost, if not, white. Now this is metallic, so it could reflect actual white. So let's say that there's a super bright light filtering in, creating this around him. And that means you could still have green back there, right? And just because this area has a lot of light back there, it doesn't mean everything is necessarily being lit with direct light. So we can indicate light by letting it hit him and still have plenty of value to go in here and paint other stuff behind him. There we go. Okay, I see swatches coming up on my, my feet here. I'm trying to go back to see if I can mention the solid here. <laughs> We've had solid rain here in the UK. My tiny island is living up to its rainy, cold reputation. Uh, better to be inside next to a heater than out on a Friday night like this. Yeah. Uh, the Gilded Guardian and the Archer you painted over are both mine. Oh, yeah. Spaniel. That's right. Hey, well, thank you. Um, yeah, so on that lines, I talk about that. Wow, somebody's got a seriously loud car out there. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so more on that. Go check out that video. Um, well, I, I talk about that in more detail. So, yeah. Next up, David Eugene. All right, very interesting. Uh, I applaud the unusual design of this thing so that's cool uh, we are losing a lot of color and value here though uh, just so much of the scene is very light and I need to switch layers it's not there we go <laughs> not registering I'll pull the midtones down a little bit trying to get some value into this if we get more values back in, then we can actually get more color back in. So there, so you can just see that, right? Uh, that's going to read a lot better on a card. Now, some of this is getting a bit too dark. You do need to rebalance this, but just pushing it a bit more that way would be helpful to bring some of the colors back. Uh, very unusual design for this. It feels almost like some sort of 
celestial beast, and I'm okay with that. Um, and you've got like almost like starlight or something going on in there, and that that's cool. Um, some of this though might want to give a little bit more for the head, or the face, like let the let the cheeks come out a little bit. I'm going to come up here. And you might just give him a jaw or something instead of make it look like it's spilling out of his mouth. Just something something like that would probably help instead of just letting his face sort of only have half a head. Um, you could even think about combining some of these so some of them start bigger and then they split off. So it has a little more originates from here, but then it splits into more. Uh, a bit more interesting than having just one uh, big collection of uniform sized pieces. It's kind of like this and letting this split off into multiples. You can kind of do the same thing here. But where they come from, I like that idea that the place that they come from, and say it's all that area under the, the head, and maybe the edges can fade into that, it does have that starlight, and that's where you have the light in there. So uh, just proving that a little bit. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, this is, this is halfway between cool and lazy, and I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, it has no anatomy to speak of. I, I can't. There's just weird shapes. There's just weird shapes like it's made out of clay. Uh, I think there's a better solution to that. So if you're going to use shapes, if this isn't a, a, a biological creature, if this is more some manifestation, celestial sort of thing, that's fine. But if we're going to do that, let's lean into it. And we make it so that there is these cool patterns, and these patterns... Are consistent throughout uh, and there's like swirl patterns and that comes into this and you kind of have this here but you make it so that it's very clear like maybe on the shoulders there is big there's big shapes on the shoulders and then when it comes here when it comes to the paws it's very clear shapes for these paws and again, maybe on the joints, it has like these curly things. So it looks like it's been sculpted and there's very clear patterns to everything going on here. Uh, maybe on the shoulders or you know, the elbow area, you know, it comes off into very distinct cues of shapes, uh, on like curly cues, something on that line. Just give it, Make it very clear that this is something, it's like the embodiment of something. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving past that, uh, these shapes on the tail, the tail coming out and crossing over, good. But these are very dull shapes, very uninteresting shapes. Uh, these are more interesting, even if we could just have the, the ripple pattern of... No, the waviness would be good, or if you see these things splitting off as they go, uh, that would keep you know a similar thing going on. Uh, the other thing is you've included more characters into the scene. Uh, you've done this in a very minimal way. I still, uh, and that's something that you would probably need to get clear with your, uh, your art director. If this was a commission piece, you'd probably clear that and say, I think instead of just showing gifts, I would like to include a couple of humanoids that are giving the gifts and they're going to just be supporting characters. And there's some of you, okay, he's done it okay. There's some of you that's gone too far with it. Uh, we haven't looked at them yet, but we will, and I'll reference back to this one. Why would I let it fly on this one and maybe not the other ones? 
because he hasn't changed the context of what this image is about. This image is still about the creature, and these guys are supporting characters, and what's going on between them and the creature is a supporting element. It doesn't upstage him, and it doesn't change what the gist of the image is about. One of the reasons he, that works is because we don't see their face. If we have their face, we start to identify with that character, and we start to see the... We as human beings will use that character as our avatar into the scene. We will feel from that character's point of view. And we assume it's about the character and them in the environment, not about what else is going on. Uh, you've kept a lot of detail from them. You've kept them fairly plain, which is A, showing us they're not that important. It isn't about them. I'm not showing you their face because it isn't about them. I had them turned away from you because it isn't about them. It's about what they are doing. So he's handled that well. Uh, okay, so that's good. What else? Uh, you might go in and show a couple of the gifts, like some other people have already left some things. So just establish, again, just carrying that narrative a little bit further. So somebody brought that. So somebody, he just has a couple of things stacked up here that's already been left for him. And we know that that is uh, an ongoing thing. Uh, I'm not sure what these are. Are these stalactites? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you'll need to clarify what those are. Uh, otherwise, we need to get rid of them. I'm, I'm not sure. It doesn't feel like a cave, so I'm not sure why there would be stalactites. But, yeah. Uh, another thing is, can we do something else with the walls? Is, can we maybe add some plants, some other color? Uh, can, we, can this be sculpted? Can we have some similar cool even it doesn't have to be big big prominent stuff even some subtle carvings of shapes in artwork uh symbology in the rocks that alone would make a big difference and just give you a little more interest in the environment okay that's it for this one a very cool direction you're going with it david and uh good thoughts good ideas there There we go. <laughs> and delay. Uh, this is uh, Iwa. Iwa's got two concepts. Same sort of scene. Two different creatures. Uh, looking at that. Is OBS still giving me problems? No. Okay, so YouTube doesn't like... YouTube thinks it's bad settings, but okay, well, don't know why. Uh, okay... Now, this doesn't really work here because it feels like it's very meek. Like it just got it. <laughs> I look at him like, am I in trouble? It feels like that sort of thing. It's the expression and pose that my cat makes when it just got in trouble. So that's not what we want. It's not a guardian sort of pose. This is better. That matches the physicality and the sort of the persona of this thing, but uh, we want to change the face on this one because it's straightforward to us. A lot of this has a nice three-quarter angle. There's a lot of depth in the image, but when you put the face perfectly straight to us, it feels flat. It makes it feel flat, and it makes it feel kind of fake because it's super staged. Things in life don't naturally align perfectly with us. This has a better face because it has uh, more three-dimensionality to it. So if we were to grab that. Whoa, it's not what I needed. Actually, it'd probably be the other way. And that way, 
we've got a flow to it. So his body's facing one way, he got the head facing the other way. Uh, that approach would be a better approach uh, because it has more of a three-quarter view. Uh, I had come across, just Googled around, and found this by Sharia at DeviantArt, some of the studies and drawings that they did. Hey, you know, take a look at this. These are some really nice head references that show excellent use of form. They're, they're really good shapes and, and depth uh, of volume to the shapes of the head. And all of these are more interesting than just a front view. Like even this one, that's a front view, but it's just slightly to the side and it gives us a better sense of volume of what's going on. Uh, I was going for like an ice scene. Those are supposed to be icicles. Oh, okay. Yeah, an ice scene, that could work. Yeah, uh, that's just something you would have to pull off in rendering then. And what I was thinking of, just white stone, you're probably going for ice. Yeah, make sure that you find good references for doing snow, doing ice. And remember, snow is usually not white. I mean, if it has any kind of shade on it, then it is going to have beautiful, uh, usually beautiful blue colors, because it's going to reflect almost the exact color of the sky. Uh, so, you know, look at something like that would be good. Um, this is a little style guide, uh, guide part one by Tamborella that I just came across on Google. And for some reason, it won't let me change the size. And these all show different cat heads, the way that the hair forms, the way that the skull is. And then, you know, all kinds of little variations here. It doesn't have to be a straight lion. Maybe it's more like a mountain lion. Maybe it's more like a cheetah. Uh, some slightly different changes in the head there. I just want to play something. Okay, uh, so that would be one of my first things. Let's adjust that head, that body's okay. Uh, <laughs> so when I first looked at this, I was like, that red stuff, I'm going to guess that's probably supposed to be flowers, but it looks like intestines. And that would be a really weird gift. It's like, yes, you want to go to the beautiful forest? Well, you need to bring the guy mirror some intestines. Uh, so definitely something we've got to clean up in the, uh, in, the, in the rendering part of the image. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you got a comment here. Does YouTube allow links in the chat yes but i have to okay them before they show up in the chat so it flags it for me and says somebody's trying to add a link so yeah but you look like you're sending something legit so uh okay what else uh yeah i've got the flowers uh you might even think about some of the flowers having an actual flower uh, then most of it being petals just so that when it gets real little that we can probably still recognize the shape of a flower, uh, where flower petals are going to get so small we might not be able to see them. Uh, another option would be to even have some of them blowing. All right, we have some beautiful uh, uh, little petals that are getting blown by a breeze. And that would also help to indicate maybe that these are flower petals, since we have to assume that they're light enough to, to be blown around. Uh, something on that line. Uh, this is another one where we could have a nice bright light on the creature itself or part of the creature, and then not have to blow out the background. So if we grabbed... Uh, so we grabbed this. Uh, I just masked it, and then... See how gray that was getting? 
It's just really gray and kind of dark. So we can still have nice, beautiful color back there. I'm just dropping in the image of the, the Rhine illustration. I think it was concept art from the movie, uh, the movie, the game Rhine. So yeah, there's a nice bit of color. It's not necessarily getting blown out, but it still feels nice and bright. And we want to sell that by having the light really bright up on the creature. Uh, so like you see on this wall back here, where the light is actually hitting the wall, it is white. But the rest of it, that is mostly in shadow, but well lit shadow, uh, lots of bounce light, is not. So it's going to be more like that. Maybe part of the tail is getting some light too. And uh, then that wall over there would be catching light. All right. And then I'm just letting that serve as my uh, my guide right now. Kind of like that darker part here. Uh, sort of like that color, but I need a darker, more vibrant version. Otherwise, it's going to get grayed out like that. So, you know, something along that line, and that could probably help. Uh, these stones, uh, those stones look pretty good. Uh, these stones, I feel like, are a little odd, just at that angle, and especially with the one that's laying up right in line with the curve of the arch. Uh, we might want to get rid of that guy uh, and just have, like, this dude, and maybe he, you know, another one laying off, you know, this direction, something more like that. And then the moss, I think, is excellent. It's a good way to add some color, especially if you have some more green in the background, that you can bounce some of the, the green off of this. So we have some more green. We add some green up on top of these guys. This is a great place to show some, uh, some cracks. You know, there's lots of great images of moss covering uh, old tombstones, uh, moss in old ruins. And we can put some moss up on the walls, you know, on, on some of the bigger, bigger stones sticking out. And uh, make it just seem really cool. Just the sort of place that you would want to go. Place that this guy would want to hang out. Maybe some rock uh, moss up on the, on the corners of the steps that don't get stepped on very much. You know, something along that lines. So, yeah, you got an excellent direction. Uh, a lot of the image has already been taken care of, the idea-wise. Uh, the layout of the scene, and uh, you, you've got a good face down here. Let's just get that face up here. Also, let's not forget about the mane. Uh, that's another thing is the mane is really getting kind of lost, and that should be one of the hallmarks of this, this creature is this amazing mane. That's what it's known for. So, you know, what can we do to to give it a more interesting more interesting take on this thing. And maybe we start being able to use it as a pattern. It has like smaller ones coming off, you know, in other places. And maybe it has golden lines that come down its body. Maybe it has golden tips to some of its hair that match in. Right? Maybe it has golden I don't know, claws. Uh, just trying to run with it a bit further, make it make it more of a prominent feature. Uh, I own a I own a Vorster. <laughs> Very different sketch here. Uh, <laughs> we have a whole range of. Everybody sketches differently. Everybody sketches differently. It's great. Uh, uh, layer. Yeah, I'm going to move my layer over here. Sometimes it's nice to be able to watch people are doing with the layers. 
So, uh, another scene, it's not highly detailed, it's not, you know, lots of rendering going on here, but it is largely successful. It does, and, and this is what I mean, successful. It does what it needs to do. Does it fill the requirements of what this image is about? Yes. Then it's successful. It doesn't have to be the greatest painting that's ever been painted. It doesn't have to be the greatest painting you've ever painted. It has to meet the requirements of what the image is for. And it does that. So, uh, okay. This sort of almost Arabian style window. I love it. Arabian sort of style with some of this. Love it. Uh, what else do we want to do here? Uh, well, anatomy. I think we got to check the anatomy, especially in the front part of this thing. It's a little... You know, it's a little sketched in, is all. Uh, there's lots of good anatomy stuff out there. I mean, you can just go Google, find all kinds of stuff like this. Um, I thought I'd grab some more, but I don't see them. Maybe I put them in uh, MTG. Oh, yeah, here's another one. Here's somebody else, uh, Olya Bosak. Came across this one. Beautiful piece. Uh, this sort of approach. This is a wonderful approach as well. Uh, something on that line. That very majestic creature. And you notice how they, they let the floral ideas you know, flow into the sort of lion shape. And it's just a, a beautiful blending of the two. And allowed it to adjust some of this stuff too. It almost has an avian uh, sort of style to all this as well. With uh, kind of feather-like. And the differences of the colors of the, uh, the different hair and, and petals and stuff. Oh, you know, that's a great piece. Oh, yeah, I saw this one, too. Like, what if it was all white? What if it was pure white with, with gold around it? And it would just be a, a creature of such purity and kind of grace. Uh, that would be cool, too. Something on that line. So, okay, so on this one, uh, let's just check the anatomy. Uh, I'm not going to do that for you. You can go look it up. I feel like this is probably sticking out a bit too far. Uh, this is a nice shape. That reads well. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, you've got some on the tail. What else can we do back here? Uh, even if you just give it some, uh, some cool little stripes, right? Just give it some nice stripes, maybe. Uh, so that we're continuing that color a little bit somewhere else. Probably some down his chest, too. You know, just not necessarily, you know, petal, big petals or anything. Just like colors in the, uh, in the creature fur. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is sort of odd, leaving that window right there just cut off. Uh, what if we were to just, again, crop in... To about there. Uh, we can just crop that window out. We don't necessarily need that. And we don't need the bottom part of this either. So right there. It's okay if a little bit of the tail gets uh, cut off there. That's okay. I think there might be a more interesting way to do the tail though. This, this curve is sort of odd the way that it does that. Um, I'd almost like to see a bigger curve with a small... It's like both of these are about the same size. And that feels a little odd. Uh, it would be better to do like a smaller one with a big curve on it. Or like a big curve with a little kink on the end. Yeah, something on that lines. Um, you have the light like it's just hitting right here. Um, then we probably need some sort of light down here because we're going to have so much bright light here and we need something to offset it. Even if there was like an off-screen fire down here and we could just maybe have some warm glow on some stuff down here, that would be fine. 
Uh, just make sure that we don't, we don't lose too much there. Uh, this feels a little odd. That's not what I meant. It feels a little odd to, uh, to have the break here. We don't show any other destruction or ruin on the rest of the building, but then we have this clear break, and it's right where this thing's <laughs> uh, pieces are coming up right there. It's like this breaks around that head thing. Uh, just, you know, go ahead and finish that. We can just have that right there, let that overlap it. That's fine. Or if you want to have it broken, then we need to at least make that go elsewhere and have like pieces broken out of the wall so that this is clearly a place that's kind of falling apart. We got, you know, some of the steps that are broken off. Um, you know, maybe, this, maybe, you know, this thing's sort of broken off, and, you know, there's chunks coming off of it. You need to make that a consistent part of the scene. So, there we go. Looking forward to it. Good start. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan working his 3D magic again. Okay. Layer, layer, layer. Interesting. This is interesting. Uh, yeah, you got the steps coming up right here, and you got your archway, him, uh, nice lighting coming through here. All right, so the composition and the overall arrangement of the scene I like. Uh, I think that's good. Where would I put the focus from here or what would I adjust? Uh, now again, I'm not a 3D guy, so I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'm just talking about the, uh, the final image, where to go from here. Um, the sort of I mean, say Egyptian cat, it's got a nice physique to it. Uh, he has gold coins that are being given as uh, gifts. Now, I think Jonathan did say on a post that he was planning on adding in other jewels or uh, like a crowns, golden things of value so that it's more clear that they are, that's what it is from a distance. And uh, that's exactly the right call. We do need some, you know, like you know, golden candlestick or something for us to recognize that from a distance as being treasure. Uh, this is, I suppose, just a block in. We need to find a much more interesting shape to that. Uh, we've already talked about that on some of the other ones. And you can kind of just, you know, play around in Photoshop. Do I want a, you know, this sort of thing? Do I want that sort of thing? Do I want one that's mainly hanging down? Do I want one that folds into the ears? Do I want one that's almost like antlers that kind of spill off on each side and give it this you know, wide top to it? And then maybe it has a, a part that comes down the front like that. And maybe it has you know, a, you know, same sort of thing on its tail where it kind of splits off and does that. Maybe it has two tails, you know, whatever. Uh, so play around probably in Photoshop, figure out a shape that would be good, or go out there and get the 3D models of different flowers and, and, you know, push it into your mesh and see which ones work. Maybe you want like a bunch of, you know, twisty ones coming off the top there. I don't know, play with it. So, uh, yeah, that, that's something you definitely need to play up because that should be the hallmark of this creature is that golden mane. Uh, we've got the wall coming down here. This needs to be utilized more, too. I imagine that you were planning on doing that, but just so it's stated, uh, make sure that that's getting utilized. Maybe some, uh, some mountains in the background. If this is supposed to be desolate, then we, we can show desolate out there. No trees or anything like that. Uh, we also might want to push a bit more green. Otherwise, let's get some better autumn colors. And we did look at, earlier at some of those, the uh, environments. You know, we can get some beautiful autumn colors like that. You might need to hand paint that, 
uh, this is going to give you much duller colors. But if we had this light, you know, this beautiful warm, well, I'm going to make this a, a linear dodge with a, like a deep orange. You know, if we had that coming across here, oh, baby, now that's cool. And this is all getting some cool autumn colors back in here. Not this sort of thing. Yeah, so uh, you, know, you can punch up the colors a bit on that too. Uh, the golden eyes, I think, are cool. This is also somewhere that if you're going to go that way and have like the golden eyes, the golden that, then you know, think about maybe some... Oh, wrong layer. Think of, you know, maybe it's got some sort of cool, you know, almost Egyptian style designs coming up on here. Across its face, and it has these neat markings that, you know, something on that lines. Yeah, and and you can work that into the design. Maybe something a little minor though. Um, uh, yeah, if you want to say something to me, uh, mint, uh, say the word swatches in your comments somewhere. Uh, it'd be easier for me to see it. Otherwise, I don't read all the ones that don't have uh, the flagged with my name. Uh, do you have any advice on how to get into creature design or how does creature design differentiate from character design? Uh, there's certainly a lot of overlap between the two. Uh, I would say you need to start with some with the anatomy. And there's a lot of good tutorials out there, uh, YouTube videos, there's ebooks. Uh, this sort of thing can be very helpful, learning some of the basic skeletal stuff of the body, learning musculature. Uh, what is her name? Um, oh my goodness. I was wanting to direct you to... You have to look it up. She's the creature designer for Star Wars. I know episodes one through three. I don't know if she's done the, the last ones or not. Creature designer for Star Wars. She's done a lot of creature illustration uh, videos, books, tutorials. Go check out her stuff. I believe that Terry, Terry from Schoolism. Does anybody remember her name? Terry Whitlatch. Yes, thank you, Edward. Terry Whitlatch. Uh, go check out her stuff. Um, good introduction there. I think Imagine Effects, I, I, I think I might even own it. <laughs> I think Imagine Effects has a book that they put together that is a collection of their anatomy for humans and animal uh, tutorials that usually comes in the magazines and they put them all together in this one book. So check that out, Imagine Effects magazine. Imagine effects, just FX. Yeah, I'll put that in the chat. Uh, and it's a good place to learn about how the an animal, animal anatomy, even like a big cat, is similar to human anatomy, and what the um, what the similarities are. Because if you can understand what the similarities are, you can see that this is basically a modified human being. At least you can get your mind to think that way. And then it is easier to start coming up with other creatures. Uh, another thing that's good with designing creatures is having a lot of um, references. And if you want to challenge yourself and just have a, an easy way to go about trying to create a creature, 
Is grit two different kinds of creatures or a creature and some other object and try to blend the two. So say I want to cross between a mountain lion and a gerbil. We'll get a mountain lion and get a picture of a gerbil and see if you can sketch something that has parts of both. Or say I want to cross between a lion and a lily flower, which is kind of what we have on this one. Well, sit down and see how you can combine those. And that's a good way to come up with new creatures is just trying to get two things that aren't normally combined and put them together in some creative and interesting way. Well, hopefully that helps you out. Um, that's also a good question. If you want more resources, maybe more ideas on how to do that, drop it in the uh, Facebook group and we'll try to get that answered. And other people will have other good resources. And it is pouring down again. So if you're hearing static in the background, it's because it's just absolutely pouring right now. Okay, Kayla. All right, Kayla. Dun, dun. A lot of good stuff going on here. A lot of good stuff going on here. You have a very clear idea of what you're wanting for the light, uh, the color scheme. You have a very white or very light creature with the gold. That's working. Uh, and it looks like candles. Candles are the gifts that are being left, which is kind of cool. It actually plays into the... Uh, the lighting and interest of the scene. So what do we want to do? Well, I feel like he's getting a bit, bit cropped here. We don't really have any headroom for the poor guy. So if we were to lose a little bit on the bottom to give him some more headroom, that would be a good call. So let's do that. And I make that I, I make that sort of mistake and problem. Uh, get used to seeing your own image for a while and you forget and, and stop noticing some stuff like that, just compositional stuff like that. Ugh. Okay. Sometimes I am amazed how effective this uh, quick selection tool is. And sometimes I am amazed how stupid it is. <laughs> it's usually very much one or the other. Okay. Uh, I feel like this is one where we probably could get some higher values there and pump that up. Uh, because its values were still just getting a bit dark. So we could do that. We could grab some of these areas being lit like this. Again, punching that light up. No, nope, we don't need that. Uh, helps a lot, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, thank you. Uh, where do I live? I live in central Tennessee and it normally doesn't rain this much. It, We've had one of the rainiest winters on record this year. So on that, maybe pushing that up. Is that sort of difference? Okay, so that's, uh, that's fairly minor stuff, but there we go. On that, uh, these, again, can we come up with a slightly better silhouette? This is creating a very simple, uh, very simple shape here. Can we do something more interesting? Can we get these maybe have opposing angles, like these curve up, this curves down, or it might be the other way. Maybe the middle one goes up, top ones come down, this one goes down. And so that we have something more than just everything has the same angle going downwards. And again, that's where you get the very armor 
look to it. And we want to try to avoid that a little bit. And we got that. Uh, I'm going to say take these off. They just look very tacked on. If you want anything, just let the uh, fur fade to gold. Just let it change colors into gold at the ends of the legs. And that way you can work some more colors into it. Uh, for the flames, what you might want to do is use a bit more punch. Like these are actual light sources. They need to be getting light source bright. They should have a lot of vibrancy and make sure we're not skimping on those. They should be nice and bright. So let's put those in there. Uh, the tail feels fairly dull compared to the rest of it. Um, I'm, I'll go look at the tail. I, I, don't know, I just feel like this is, it's really tacked on. It's just kind of like, oh, tail. And it's completely exactly what you think a tail that's fuzzy all the way down should be. Um, can it have something else? Can, it, can we put some contour lines on it so that it has... Uh, you know, like sh some sort of patterning so it has a sense of volume. Uh, can it be thin and then maybe it gets towards the end and bushes out uh, so that there's some sort of change in it? Uh, can it loop over itself? You know, in some way that it, it has a bit of overlapping? Because right now we, we can't tell if this is coming towards us, if this is going away from us. Or three-dimensionally, we don't know the z-axis of anything to do with that tail, which makes it feel very flat. Uh, if there was some vines hanging down, and it went in behind the vines, even that would help. That would kind of give us a little bit more feeling of three-dimensionality to it. Um, that would be helpful. Uh, you got the cool light back here. Make sure that you're looking up references for gold and, and knowing how to pull off the gold look better. Uh, for the candles, having one well done candle, probably overlapping it somewhere along here. If you want to put it on the edge, I don't feel like it's kind of getting caught off right there. But we could have the one candle that's closer. To the uh, the camera so it's very clear what we're looking at and then actually looks darker inside of it and then it gets lit when it comes down and then candles are really cool because they are translucent so the part in here is going to be shadowed And then we're going to have light inside of it. Oh. And the light's going to penetrate down into it. So you're going to get this glow. So make sure you go look at that. And there's some really interesting... I had to paint a, a candle as a major feature on, on an image. I learned a lot about painting candles. <laughs> it's a really interesting thing to study uh, is the translucency. And you're going to get like certain threads uh, or you know parts that hang down. So you can really showcase that on one or two candles near, and we can assume that is uh, the rust, right? So we can add some, some glow to the candles. And those make really interesting visual elements, having the, that wax glowing from the light of a candle. Uh, question, uh, are you planning on doing the challenges two weeks and two weeks from now on? And this stream time was perfect for the European people, I think. 
Uh, yeah, we're going to try the two weeks for the sketch, two weeks for the final for a while, and see if there's any negativity to that. Uh, what I was running into is I wanted to cover other things on streams, but we were just spending every single week on the challenge. So I didn't really see a downside to giving people more time and giving me the option to cover more stuff. So, yeah, we might go back to two-week challenges instead of doing four weeks, but we're going to let it run like this for a while. Okay, well, I think we talked enough about that, Kayla. Uh, a lot of good things here. Uh, really is just pushing it further and going on to uh, refining the image, not really changing too much. Uh, Kayla, no, Kayla, Kina. I've got Kayla and Kina and get Kayla. Come on. Oh, wrong program. Where is my mouse? Oh, <laughs> here we go. That helps. Okay, so uh, Kina has this, uh, the basic elements. Okay. We need to, I, I mean, it can be a very passive pose. It's a very simple pose. That's okay. But uh, another image where most of the image space is being not utilized. So we need to make better use of the overall image space. I'm going to grab a uh, character here. Do another one of these zoom ups. Let's get to the points of interest. You know, if you want to do it completely centered, I mean, you can do that. I mean, you can just do it like that. Yeah, we want to make better use of the space, and that means we need to zoom up on the arch. We need to zoom up on the creature and get them to both be more prominent in the scene. Uh, the tail, another one where... Can we use it in order to create a more interesting pattern and maybe some overlapping? So can it be, you know, folding back on itself? Can it be, you know, coming down this way? Can it go behind and up and around? Any of these things is going to give more overlapping and more interesting than just, uh, you know, the, the snake curve there. Uh, so that's good. Um, this is fine. You might want to, you know, think about adding like some, you know, like gold maybe on the inside. You have golden eyes. Uh, yeah, double check your cat anatomy. That something doesn't feel right on that. So double check that. Like, its chest is bigger or something. You know, find some references for that. So I don't know how to paint all things without references. So I'm. Try to do that. Uh, and think about what your lighting is going to be. Uh, we have the basic blocking of this, but now we need to figure out where's the light, where's the shadow. Also, we need your gifts, whatever your gifts are. We need those here. What, did, what do people leave for your version of this thing? And make sure that they're around there. And can we add some sort of interest to... Uh, this wall, just give it some architecture. Maybe it has, you know, shapes. Maybe it has, it's, they're not holes, but maybe it just has like, you know, designs kind of in the wall, at least to give it a little interest, that sort of thing. Um, maybe this has plates up on the top, because, that, you know, we added plates there too. <laughs> Cat anatomy is cruel, they're basically liquid. Yeah, yeah, they're basically liquid. 
liquid in in fur. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, overall design's fine. Let's just zoom up on the guy and make sure we don't forget about the gifts. Let's do something more interesting with the shape of the tail. Try to get some more uh, depth out of it. You got to think about what uh, the lighting's going to be. Um, yeah, there you go. Serval, like they have weird proportions. Okay, uh, Leonardo. Okay, he's got two different versions here. Da -da -da. Let's see. Uh, there's pros and cons to each of these. I'm not having one of these designs really stand out from the other one. I mean, this is kind of neat, uh, this angle of him. I think that it's pretty cool. I think this pose is more interesting than this one with its head straight at us. Uh, but I've, that's, there's no wall, there's no arch. If you would make this even a half wall, and, and just, you know, part of an arch, we don't necessarily need to see the whole thing. You know, part of it gets cropped off, and you have it over here. Uh, then I'd probably go with this one. And, and maybe leave some more room there for the arch. Let that open up a bit more. And because when you put the wall there, you're going to lose some of the visibility of the background. So I might put that there, and then you have your wall. Uh, this feels a little weird that it's exactly the size of the, the creature, and it makes it feel like he's just kind of perched up on top. So if we do that, we need to make this bigger. Like this is a nice big stone. Not just one little thing. And we can put some grasses there in the foreground. See, so there's some grass in the foreground. But this is one, you know, another wall or ledge. And maybe make it a little more proper. Or maybe it has like a little, you know, bit of molding or something on the top of that. Give it a little interest. Uh, that would be better, and then we could add some cool forest back there. I mean, it could be like a massive rainforest. Uh, it could be just some forest in the distance with like a beautiful, uh, you know, valley or something back there. Also, don't forget about the clouds. Um, this is a good place that you can you know, have some cool majestic clouds back there. Uh, we don't have any gifts, so we need to think about what those are. We need, to, we need to put some gifts in here, whatever they are. Uh, same thing here, no gifts on this one. So make sure we don't forget those. Uh, if you go with this one, get the gifts and it just, it feels uncomfortable sitting on the steps like that. Uh, what you might want to do is just make this one big step on the top, combine those first two so it doesn't feel like it's trying to lay across two steps on a slant. And that you actually got a little, it's got a little room to actually sit there. It, just, it would get me as a viewer to be like, that looks really uncomfortable. Uh, something on that. Um, uh, the arch is probably a bit small. We, we need to show, a, probably more feature of the force a little less of of just the wall itself walls are easy to understand so either open that up or maybe we just lower how much wall we have it doesn't have to take up the whole image maybe we do that sort of thing I'm really just going over the concepts on a lot of these. I'm not going over so much on the execution, because that's where we are. We're on the uh, sketch phase. We're on the concept phase, so that's what I want to talk about. I want to... It looks like there's some coins and stuff on the ground. Uh, yeah, I mean, I noticed that. I, that might be the case. It might be like these are coins, but they're, it's so small, it's so minimal, that it couldn't be understood at a normal size. Uh, if you make stacks of coins, 
that's that's maybe possible uh, but having something a little bigger or more abundance of them would be better uh, so that wall making it bigger or I mean making the arch bigger maybe the making the wall a little smaller would be an option uh, these are nice shapes I'm good with how you've handled a lot of this I like this pattern better than this pattern this looks more like just hair uh, so kind of the floral edging on this is more interesting. Uh, this is also a good idea, guys. This is something you can think about, and that is having something like horns. Horns are fine. You want to give it tusk? Tusk are probably fine, too. Give it some weird hair, you know, thing that comes off the side? Okay. Maybe you give it four horns. That's fine. Um, you add in, I mean, like, he has three here instead of four that's fine those are places that you can still be creative and you can make this something else uh, i think somebody here we haven't got to it yet but they gave him wings that's okay that, that doesn't change the the gist of what it is i mean it's a kind of mirror so you, you could toss in a little extra something else animal aspect to it so uh let me go I guess something that's sort of getting me with this one is that he's on the right side of the image and he's right heavy. That would be better. It's, it's another one of those flip the background sort of things. That if you put him on the left side of the image so that he's more centered with his main body yeah that that would be better then the arch can come over here and that that would be a bit better yeah it, it gets him more centered up instead of thrown off to the side and allows the scene to, to balance out a little better there we go uh good designs uh especially that one on the top uh nice angle on the other one so you might end up wanting to do kind of a mesh between the two Martin is up next. Uh, any comments? Okay, Martin really going with the colors. Uh, beautiful line work on this one. Uh, it's one of the things that you always do well with. You know, a lot of good sweeping forms, uh, feeling of a lot of volume. Uh, it reminds me a bit of Evan Amundsen, if you've never seen his work. Uh, really nice work. I'll try to put it in the chat, and hopefully I can spell it correctly. I think it's Evan, even, Mun, Munson? I think it's that. You, you can put that art, and you, you should be able to find it. He's got a art station gallery. But he's got great line work, lots of volume to everything. Uh, so, Martin, uh, going back to what we talked about earlier, I think you're getting too creative for your own good for this challenge. Uh, it's like you've let the challenge inspire you to do something other than what this challenge is about. So, for instance, this is no longer a floral pattern. That's just hair. It's not gold, it's blue. Again, uh, the arch is, if, if this is an arch, it's a very secondary thing. Um, so there's several of the major things that was asked for in in the challenge brief that you're not doing and frankly it puts me in a hard spot because it's a really well done drawing and it's an interesting image and it's an interesting character but it's not what this is about um uh, and and as i've i I've said it before, I have to critique things based on what I asked for. And that's not really what I asked for. 
and I'm, I'm going to be a little harder on you than some other people because of where you are in your skills. You're at the point where you are either starting to get work or should be soon getting work. You're, you're at that level. And that means you really need to be able to work within the framework of a brief. Because that's where you're going to be soon if you're not already dealing with that. And being able to be creative within the brief is really important. Um, as an art director at Magic, if that was me and you sent it in, I'm going to say, Martin, you got to redo this. It's a beautiful image, but this isn't the creature that we asked for. This isn't the place that we asked for. This doesn't have the environment that we asked for. And I mean, I got to say that. So uh, art teacher wise, I'm going to say beautiful image, great use of shapes, great use of volume. Um, and if you want to do this scene and, and, and that's the other thing. If you want to let this inspire you to go do another image like this, and you, th you just see how this would be really cool, then go do it. You don't have to do my challenge. All right? If you would rather go work on this than finish what I've asked for, that's fine. Seriously, I take no offense at that. If you want to put this in your portfolio and you want to work this up and just say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to follow what the brief said. I would rather just do this and finish this up for my portfolio. All, all the power to you, man. Go do it. I, this is all about getting you to paint. But I would be neglecting my role if I said, this is acceptable for this challenge. Okay. Um, if you're going to continue with this scene, this there's a big disparity between how this is executed and how this is executed. Uh, it really feels like there's not hardly any continuity between the two. And if you're going to go with this scene, now I'm not going to do this very often. If you send it back in like this, following this, I'm not going to give you more feedback on it because this isn't what I asked for. I'm just giving you a little extra two cents in case this is something you're going to run with up on your own. Uh, this is a big disparity. And if you're just going to do this scene, I'm going to probably say just change that background. There's no need for it. It's not really helping this anymore. Uh, it could almost be interesting if this was some sort of castle. And if, I mean, you just had a beautiful sky out here, a beautiful sunset, maybe even the ocean. Something simple. You got a lot of nice, beautiful information up here. We don't know. We don't need anything competing against it. Uh, if if you do want it to like kind of inside, maybe this is, maybe this is a giant you know window that he has his all of his gold at the edge of this window, and then he looks out, and you're really really high, and you know the horizon lines way up here. You got mountains in the background, and you got like you know, streams and valleys, and maybe you see like a city down there. Now, he's overseeing this entire city, and you're, and you're way up like that. I mean, like something that would be cool, but if you're going to snap it back to the guides of this challenge, then we need to get this to be flowers, flower-based in some regard. I love the wind. Let's not lose that. I love the tail. That can probably stay pretty much the same. But gold, let's make sure it's gold. And we need to change this somehow so that this is clearly an arch and a wall. Uh, and maybe we, we change it up. Maybe we make the arch behind him. Maybe this is the arch back here, and this, this is a wall. Something like that. And, and you're know, changing the perspective. And maybe there's steps right here, and these are the steps that go down. We're completely changing up, you know, all that. And now back here is the background. And here is the wall, and here is our steps. Uh, and then we've got this dude up here. Maybe he's way up high, and that's still fine. Uh, 
maybe we can see, you know, the steps are, he's really big. Maybe we see mountains and stuff down there. I don't know. But there we go. Um, hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, I, I know that's a lot. There's kind of a split, split feedback on that. But uh, you know, I'm going to share with you something that I learned, and that is reread the brief. It's been more than once that I have created a sketch, and I went back, and I reread the brief, and I thought, that's really not what they asked for. And I had to go back and make a new concept. And there's also been other times that I'm just about to send in the email, and like, you know what, I'm gonna reread the brief just in case I forgot something. And I did. Sometimes I just forgot like a secondary element where, oh, the guy's supposed to have a shield. Totally forgot to maybe give the guy a shield. And so I go back and I have to sketch a shield and send it back in later. Or there's other times that I forgot to turn one of the layers on. Like there was supposed to be a ship in the background. I forgot to turn the layer on that had the ship. So the image that I was about to send in didn't have all the layers on. And it's just a really simple, simple thing to do. Just make sure you reread the brief before you submit something to make sure you don't forget it or that you haven't got off on some trail too far from what was asked for. Okay, uh, this one is by Matt Woodcock. And we've got a good sense of light here, a very lion-based uh, creature. Now, this is one where I'm going to call it for, for changing the narrative too much. This is now about the interaction between these two characters. It's not about this character. It's about her. If you put a human being in it, you put light on them, you're giving them something to do, then it's about the human. We as humans connect to humans in images, and if there's a human and an animal, we're going to connect to the human. Like 99% of the time. So we need to remove the human. This, if, again, MTG style challenge. Not every challenge is going to be like this. Not every challenge has been like this. There's some challenges where it is all about the narrative. Uh, even in the older uh, challenge, we did Spade Shop, which is a sci-fi mechanics shop that we you guys had to do. Uh, I, I told you, you know, think a little bit about the narrative. So you, you have the character Spade and he's working on some sort of mechanics. Okay, well, what is he working on? Well, what sort of tools would he need to buy him while he's working on that? What is his assistant doing? Well, it would make sense that maybe his assistant is bringing up a display of the diagram of the thing that they're working on. So you can start bringing in a little narrative of working out what's happening on this scene. And that makes sense for the scene because it is about the scene. It is about the location and what happens in that location. This isn't about the location of what happens here. It is about the creature. So uh, in this, let's uh, get rid of the character. Uh, you know, it was actually, the character looked pretty good. I'm not, I'm not hashing that. And same thing as with the previous image. If you want to go on and do this image uh, on your own and you just like, like the idea of it and you want to finish it, go do it. But it's not going to fit the challenge specs anymore if you continue it that way. So, yeah. Okay, so if we do that, uh, then we need to get him centered up a bit more. Again, making a bit more use of that space. Feature it on the character. And the rain is back. Okay, so uh, that would get you a lot closer. Uh, we're getting too, too much lion. Uh, it's too lion-like, so make sure we're going again. Think about what kind of... <laughs> we're doing a, 
little flower line <laughs> uh, doing this and remember guys this could even be a wolf like i said you know something canine something feline anything like that i mean you could if you think about it wolf that's maybe going to give you some different sort of shapes it's going to give you a different body type uh so uh, figure out what you want as far as that i'm not sure what this is are these flowers if these are flowers that needs to be clarified if not let's just make it stone because i'm confused what it is right now um if you do want it to be like these cascading flowers which would be kind of cool I'd, I'd be on board then let's have some some trails of them uh right you have like the green that's uh like hanging down here we've got different green here hanging down and uh, then you've got all the uh got all these flowers hanging off of it so it's this really beautiful entrance uh, covered in covered in these flowers and you could have some of them hanging down from the top of the arch which we don't really see but they could be there as well hanging down kind of like that and that would be really neat and then it allows us to have a bunch of petals on the ground that would be a nice uh, pop of color there and yeah candles again another one of the candles make sure we're trying to get some color in with the candles though i mean they get nice oranges and reds and look at some people that have painted some candles uh, i did i did something with candles move this out of the way again always have to be careful what i'm showing you because i on my phone sorry guys let me turn that off um because i got some like magic information and stuff that i can't necessarily show off here Oh, it's under printing. I think I can open that. Okay, so uh, printing prints. I hate this thing. Just sometimes doesn't recognize that you can do that. Uh, so, like, yeah, I painted uh, this candle, and. You can get a lot of really cool translucency out of candles and the way the light comes through them, some good colors. Uh, this is a, one way to do um, flame, is that the flame itself is actually white. Uh, then you get most of the color off of the area around it where it gets its pop. Same thing here, like the center of this is just almost white, R really, really close. And then you get the pop of the color around the edges like that. And you get that nice glow that comes down on the inside. And wherever it gets thicker is where you get the, the cooler, darker color. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, giving some, you know, giving some candles down here, some nice color off of those would be good. And uh, there you go. That would be nice. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of something else. Some bushes or, yeah, you'll need something at least to fill that. Even if, you know, you just add a pathway or something would be good too. But there you go, Matt. Hopefully that will help you out. There we go. Oh, yeah, change the size. That threw me off. There we go. Matthew Oates is up. Okay, Matthew, another really good piece uh, that is probably <laughs> over-rendered for a concept submission. Uh, no, definitely over-rendered for a concept <laughs> submission, um, but largely successful. So what's, what, what's the changes here that we're looking for? Okay. One is where we don't really have an arch anymore. 
No arch. Can we get the arch back in? Can we get these to maybe be arches? Um, that's fine. Have that back here. Get that. And we, we still have the tail there. And then maybe this side comes up here. Something like that. Uh, or if we want to put it further back, maybe instead of the trees there, we have the arch behind him. And so you get the arch, it's just not on the same level that he's at. So you kind of put it back there and then you kind of indicate the, the wall and maybe the wall is right about there. I think maybe you're trying to make that the arch, but it's it's just a pillar. We don't see any curve to it, so I can't really know for sure whether that's an arch or not. But something on that line would sort of split the difference between what you're looking at as far as that. Uh, okay, uh, this, like I talked about with the other guys, uh, horns, the ram horns, good idea. Mix it up, add some other stuff to it. Uh, you give in a very nature-based creature. Uh, you get like very mossy and stuff here. Uh, this again, very, very clean shape. Not a very interesting shape. Interesting shapes inside. Not an interesting silhouette. So let's try to find some ways that we can let those be nice and flowery on the edges. All right. And we're getting very grayed out on some of this. So I'm not sure what your workflow is, but that's getting sort of grayed out. Uh, we'll need to address that. Uh, something else is you have this perfectly round, well-rendered uh, thing in the background here. And that's, it's almost distracting. It's so, because because everything sets up for it, and, and, and it's stealing attention away from this guy. The steps lead up to this. The trees encircle it. It sits right within this comfy little frame. You've got multiple layers of stuff that kind of encircle around this thing, and it's very uh good with having uh, repeated patterns so focal point wise there's a lot of things that make it the focal point of the image but yet you put this guy bigger and you put him in the middle and now we've got this dichotomy where the attention of the image is split between these two things uh, if it was me and i didn't want to lose all my hard work I think I would grab that and just let it, is that snap on? Yeah, let's take the snap off. And let it uh, just be covered off a bit by, you know, be, let it overlap, be overlapped by either a tree or the arch or something like that. Off-center it. So the image, like right now, everything sort of leads up to that and then stops. But if we were to do it this way, it feels like it just allows us to lead on. And maybe we show the path doing this sort of thing. So it's just one stop, right? And it makes it feel like everything continues on from that place. And now it's not trying to vie for as much attention. And you're going, you know, side to side with stuff as you're going up uh, instead of everything just being stopped with him. Right. Uh, that would be one thing. Uh, you've got a certain design going on with the tail, which is fine, but we need to mimic that somewhere else. Uh, it's a bit one of the reasons I mentioned changing this. The ends of these need to come out and be curly like that does or we at least need some other maybe smaller ones that come off of different places so that's not just a standalone design pattern 
something like that. Uh, if you do put that wall in somewhere around there, then we can we can take that guy out. We don't necessarily need him over there. If anything, we could just you know let that let that brighten up some. Um, get some light back in that sort of area. And if you're going to be backlighting some leaves, you can have a nice, nice bunch of bright light popping in those. And if it's catching some of those grapes, then they too can have some good pops of color. Yep. I think we need a clear distinction kind of where the light's coming because it's lighting him then it's, it's not really lighting anything else. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, I'm being a little more picky with the lighting on this one because you've already went ahead and established a lot of the lighting. But if it's going to light him, then it should be catching some of that area. Like he's going to cast a shadow maybe on that. But this probably is going to be catching some light somewhere over here. And this is a good place where we can get some nice bounce light up in there. Kind of along there. And then you know, some of this is catching light. So and that way it makes it feel like it's more believable because the light is falling across this scene in a more uh, believable manner, and you know he's casting a shadow. So you know if he's casting a shadow, it's going to be a bit darker behind him there. But where it picks up the light behind him, then there's going to be more bounce light on those steps. So that's all going to be brightened back up. Some of this is going to be catching light on the other side of him. So that, that should be brightened back up a little bit. And we're not going to be going to black so quickly with some of those. And really get a better sense of the light into this. Um, we're going to dark very quickly on a lot of this. And let's try to keep from that. So, yeah. Add that back in. Uh, then with the candles again, uh, let's just make a new layer, throw that to a, a linear dodge, and then hit some of those guys up. And that allows them to help break up some of that dark down there, add a bit more color to it, right? Something on that line, and then they can serve to add a bit of warm, very warm orangey light some stuff around here. So then on that lines. And then the rest of this stuff, you know, it can be a bit cooler if you wanted. Like you could have kind of the cool light coming across it. Okay, um, like I said, largely successful. Uh, we just want to make sure that we are not competing with some other element in the background like you'd have with uh, this. Uh, don't have to take it out. It's well rendered. Let's just offset it, uh, overlap it a little bit so it's not um, just yeah, catching so much attention. Um, change up the silhouette a little bit or find some way that these elements can be more... Oh, more harmonious. And, oh yeah, uh, something else I've got to say is on the design, you've gone with like this thing being, I don't know if this is hair or what, it feels like this is moss. 
And I, I would rather see that be treated on the horns as well. And show me that these horns are like covered in moss. And then they're gray, like the rest of the body, except for the, you know, they can be, I'm trying to find some middle gray there. It's like they're gray, except for they've got moss growing on the top of them. On the parts that face up, you know. Uh, and that would connect it back a little bit. Uh, question is, uh, is it okay if the highest value in the piece is not on the focal point? Granted, it serves a purpose. Uh, yeah, it can be. If it serves the right purpose, then yes. Uh, generally, no. But, like, this waterfall is brighter than anything here, value-wise. But there's more intense colors here. And that value helps to pop out. Uh, darker shadowed areas on the creature. So it's one of those that you let go. Uh, if it was yellow and not a duller, you know, violet tone, then that would be problematic because it has saturation and value. Mikawai. Hmm. Okay, you probably know what I'm going to say here, which is the narrative. Uh, you've introduced and changed the narrative of the scene from being about this creature to being about the interaction between the two characters. And again, this is an MTG style challenge. Uh, not every challenge is this way. Not every challenge will I and have I... Um, critiqued on that basis. I, I say that right in the in the brief. I say that right at the beginning of the challenge. So it's like you got to think about if I was creating this for magic. Sure, you can do it in your, you know, in, in your Mikowai style, but it has to serve the purpose that the brief was written for. Uh, and that wasn't about the interaction between these two. Uh, this this lion, you know, chimera, and, uh, and the little girl. Uh, and again, if you want to go finish this for yourself, do so. Do not let me dissuade you from that, but it's not going to be part of the challenge. And if you, if you submit it in again after me saying that that's a problem, I'm going to have to disregard it because that's not what this challenge is about. So... If she was gone, what's that leave us with? Yeah, uh, you understand, like, on the brief, the fact that there was gifts left for the creature, it's a side bit of information. It's, it's something to facilitate props for the image. The creativity is what can the gifts be, what colors can they add, what kind of lights can they add. It's not about the interaction of how that gift giving process is made that that would be something entirely different okay so if they were gone what's that leave us with um this guy way up here in the corner another one where there's a lot of scene that's not being utilized um, and i don't necessarily want to take out any of that i like that archway i like the way the light falls across there so I'd be interested in maybe just moving him down, sizing him up just a little bit, like 5%, 10%, and lose basically one step off of that. Oh. Actually, that was okay. We, we can let it fall like that. Uh, so that would get you pretty much closer. <laughs> it wasn't entirely there. You might even go further than that, but that would be a lot closer for being a creature illustration. Uh, another, 
another issue here, though, is there is an archway, but it doesn't lead to the beautiful forest. It leads to a really ugly forest. It, he's guarding you, what, from the bad forest? Uh, so that, that does confuse me. Um, because I, I assume this is the arch. That just looks like a bridge arch more than a entrance arch. Um, the, you know, like this is so well, well painted and stuff. And I, I do want to commend this. Uh, it's good variation of color. It's good strokes. Uh, it's a good way to build without a lot of detail. It, it's well balanced with the, the number of color variations that you have. The lighting feels good. There's good flow to some of, you know, the creature. But, again, this needs to be a proper arch to a beautiful forest instead of something dark and, and foreboding. Uh, with the creature, uh, the face can probably stay the same way. A lot of this is, but this is hair. This is not flower-based, and it's not golden. You've made the fur golden, and then taking it off of the main. Uh, so, guys, read the brief. Follow the brief. Uh, I, if you if you feel like I'm being hard on you, I would still rather you learn this lesson now than when your paycheck is on the line. Because when your paycheck is on the line, that's more stress. And when you realize that you're not, you're gonna have to, you know, wait eating an extra week, you're not gonna be able to pay your rent for an extra week because you didn't read the brief and follow it well enough, that's difficult. And I know a lot of art channels and a lot of art teachers, you know, on YouTube and stuff, they will, they'll teach you a lot about art techniques and how to paint, and that's great, and you have to have that in order to work as a professional. But there's more than that, and some of it is, it's almost like growing up a little bit. It's a little more sign of maturity. Um, delayed gratification is a sign of maturity. And for an artist, uh, knowing how to, how, how to constrain yourself properly uh, can be it uh, in an illustrative field. Now, if you can get to where you can paint your own stuff and not have to work with an art director and you are your own thing, you're creating your own images and selling them and being supported by all that, then yeah, have at it. Do whatever you want. Um, but this was set up as a, as an example of working for a, you know, MTG style project. So that's what I have to go on. There we go. Okay. Well, Mikawai, thank you for joining. Uh, I still think there's enough in there to work from. I think that can still be a beautiful image. Uh, and you've got to make the decision whether you want that to be what you are going for with that version and finish it up for yourself or whether you want it to follow the brief and, and you want to stretch the skill, not of your rendering ability, but stretch your skill of professionalism and knowing how to work as a professional. Okay. Uh, Milica. Milica. Have we had you in here? Milica. Somebody, that doesn't sound familiar. Uh, manga artists ask, how many manga artists? Uh, how can I participate? Uh, well, you got two options. Uh, the challenge is, uh, okay, two options. If you want your image reviewed on stream, then you need to become a patron. Over on patreon.com slash swatches, it's $10 pretty much on a monthly basis. And being reviewed in the challenge is one of the perks uh, along with receiving the in-depth videos and stuff uh 
and you can join in at any time. So if you want to get in on this challenge, you still have two weeks to submit a final. Uh, go out to the Swatches Facebook group. The brief of what the challenge is about, this information, is posted out there. Uh, Swatches.group will link you right over to the Facebook group. Ask to join. Uh, I try to log on every morning and approve everybody to join. And so there's your information of what to follow. Uh, then on the Patreon page, I make a post with a link to the Dropbox folder where you upload your concept. And then on Fridays at this time, uh, it'll be in two weeks, we will look at the finals for this challenge. Now, if you don't have the money or for some reason don't want to join in and uh, get your stuff reviewed on stream, you just want to do this challenge and be involved, then feel free. You can still go out there, submit a concept, do your painting, put it on the Swatches Facebook group, get some feedback from the guys, get a little input, share it around, put it on your portfolio. Uh, just know that it won't get reviewed by me on stream if you're not a patron. Uh, I had to do that because we we're getting so many entries, I couldn't get through all of them. And I had to limit it down so I, I did that and said it's a perk for patrons and that that have the numbers that I was having to deal with. Okay, so Milica, some solid ideas here. Um, excellent forms going on on this guy. This is cool. I like the combination of these nice twisty horns at the top. That is a difficult perspective to get right. Uh, and it looks particularly good. So, uh, congrats on that. Uh, good forms there. This is a nice arrangement. It's floral. It's not crazy, but it's floral. This is a little odd for me with that, that hole shape right in the front. If it needs to be a... Uh, I mean, if it's a... I would say either just do more flower shapes and just get them littler maybe as they go down. Or if it's like a symbol, then it needs to be very clear that this is, it's more, I want to say man-made or more artistic, like a very clear symbol. Okay, and uh, about his design, this strikes me as a little odd, though. This is all elegant, very streamlined, good shapes on this, good shapes on here, beautiful pointy ears. And then you get to this, and it's just like a gnarly tree trunk. Roots. And it, it just doesn't fit. Uh, it's not elegant. So we need to make the tail something elegant, following the same patterns that we've established uh, here, the same shape language that we've established here. Uh, now, this one is another one where we could probably get away with having a couple of small figures uh, just giving alms because they're very minor to the scene. Uh, we do want to make better use of some of this room though. Again, we've got a lot of space that's not doing much. And this gets little. He's taking up a pretty small amount of the real estate overall. So we want do something about that. I'm going to grab this character with their little candles and copy that and move them up maybe a step. And just get them there. And then duplicate this. Do another zoom up. Whoop. Zoom. I'm going to cut off part of that head over there. I don't want to line it right up on the edge of that. So I'll leave a little bit. And... So somewhere there. And then we can have them. No. I, I don't want her sitting right on, I thought she'd be about on the edge. So we would need to adjust that so that she's not sitting right on the bottom of the frame there. Uh, wouldn't be a big deal. 
Uh, swatches, okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to follow the brief more strictly. The girl was there just because I didn't know how to handle the gifts, but if this can be skipped, then I'll just do the creature. Yeah, just do the creature, and the gifts can be whatever. I mean, they can be flowers, they can be coins. Um, they can give you, you know, statues, uh, books, candles, anything that you think would be interesting. Uh, so something like that. And you have those little guys over there. That's fine. Okay. Uh, let's say that you, you do something a little different with this. Uh, I like this. This is cool. This archway feeling of this marble. And the marble is kind of like a cave. Like you have to come through a cave to get to this guy in order to get out into the, that area. I like that. Uh, this gets me a little bit where I have the feeling that this is going around. I need something brighter. So this step is going around that way, but we already see that there's background right there. So the background's continuing this way into the same volume that this cave should be taking up. Um, so I'm, I feel like this cave like doesn't need to be going around that way, or if it comes to there, then it needs to loop back so that this is all cave wall and it feels like it's going down fast enough that it's not going to take up the same thing otherwise it feels like the wall is this thick from here to there where i see the outside to where i see the inside here and that's as thick as this mountain wall is uh, it's a little odd so you need to think about what the spatial aspect is going on there um Your horizon line is what somewhere somewhere around there. Where's the horizon line on this? You're looking up at that, so it's your horizon line is somewhere around here, and that's why it's feeling a little off on this head. Uh, we just have some odd tilts going on between these things, so let's make sure that those are all right uh it just feels a little askew and also think about how you can make that more statue like uh, adding design so that the shapes are exaggerated and you know you've got this sort of thing going on and maybe you, you play up you know that and then it's got um, some sort of pattern on its forehead you know you got to think about that or you got to make it very angular so that it's in, you know, it's in planes, kind of like it's been chipped out. Uh, we just w don't want to make it look like it's just a, a stone head, but it's an, a proper statue. And you've got a lot of signs of age on this, so we want to do the same thing here. And maybe, you know, pieces of this have broken off, or, uh, you know, one tooth is broken off, something along that line. Uh, uh, these I would get rid of because they're not used enough and perfect circles or eye magnets and you're they're, they're not being utilized enough or there's not enough of them that there's really a pattern it's just two perfect circles sitting in the scene uh, so i'll just take those out they're not really adding enough if you just need to get more candles and put over here to offset the fact that they're not there anymore that would be better narrative usage um, I like the color difference between the warm, uh, the warm colors out here, the cooler colors in here. Uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, enough on that one. Uh, yeah, that's enough. You, you, you can get on with that. No real major problems there. Nick. Nick Marandola. Nope, again, I'm trying to get this in Photoshop. Okay, Nick Marandola. I don't remember if I saw, I don't think he posted this or I don't remember seeing it. Okay, we're getting too dark with a lot of that, so let's. 
ramp up that contrast some more and bring some more light back into it so we can all make that out. Um, yeah, this one, they've added the wings to the character and that's fine. Um, doesn't really change it. I do feel like the wings are sort of taken away from this. And again, this is more armor style. It, it doesn't feel like you're using the, the beautiful floral shapes. Um, can we, can we let these shapes kind of mimic the wing spread a little bit more like he's got you know a similar spread of of flower designs kind of coming this way or or maybe he's got you know you have the multiple layers of feathers here maybe you have multiple layers of of that coming down or coming out or can we have almost feather like parts of petals coming out so that it, it becomes more consistent. It isn't just, this is feathers, this is petals, you know, this is hair, uh, but there's this connection between all of it. Okay. I got the tall, thin arch behind him. Aggressive sort of stance. I feel like that's probably going to come down and then back up rather than up that way. Now, it feels like he kind of has his, his joint thrown up where it's going to be more like down and then up, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I might double check that. That feels, feels a little off. Uh, the cactus, let's get rid of the cactus. Unless you're really going to play into cactus, raro, desert thing, it, they're just kind of distracting. Uh, just, just use rock or, or add more armor and, and, and gems and stuff. Or add plants, add some, some vines hanging down on the walls. That, that's fine. Um, cactus, it, because they're very... Uh, and rendered this way, they're very uh, distracting because of the repeated sharp patterns, and we they shouldn't be focal points. And having repeated patterns is a focal point. Having sharp things is a focal point, and you're having like rounded shapes with repeated sharp shapes on it. Uh, so yeah, let's let's ditch those. Um, this all looks kind of cool. That, that's fine. I might think about adding some, some maybe wear to the steps, chipping them off a little bit. Maybe they're not perfect. Or can we do something where they're not just completely flat? Maybe they're at an angle. Maybe they're coming down this way. Maybe they're coming down the other way. I'm thinking of something where the steps aren't just completely flat to us or, or can they be rounded can they round in can they round out that might be more interesting can it have a side thing coming down here and at least we get a little a little change that way yeah just we're finding this basic setup and finding ways to make it a bit more interesting um He has, it feels like he has the energy of a, a, a puppy. Like, somebody's coming. <laughs> and that's okay. I, I'm on board with that. Or even moss. If you want to add moss, just to have some more color and break up some of the rock shapes. Moss is always a decent option. Yeah, uh, yeah that's good. Um, again, uh, ruling on that one is let's just get some of the basic things and make them slightly more interesting and let's find some more um, cohesion between the uh, objects uh, i mean the the design elements on the on the creature this is peter lucius peter again uh you're taking it much more as a environment scene rather than a creature illustration uh,
What can we do without losing all of this? Yeah, it's really raining now. I'm just trying something. Uh, it might be a waste of time, but I want to try and see. Like if we can make them bigger and just like essentially move that part forwards and then we could keep a lot of the same background. We just don't need them so far away. Uh, something, something closer to us like that. And I like the idea of a Asian style gate. It's a bit different. Uh, we do need maybe a little bit more of a wall, but if you wanted to pass it off as you know, just kind of a wooden, a wooden thing that sort of circles around, then that would be passable too. Just, you know, a cursory wall. Or just make sure that there's enough rocks that you couldn't get around it. Um, so something on that line. Uh, we, yeah, we really need to pull into it. I, I think this is, you got some nice shapes. I like the light coming through there. Uh, it's very peaceful. So that's fine. This uh, three eyes, again, this might be <clears throat> one that you want to turn the head a little bit. Give it a, give it a slight 3D view to it because everything is in an angle except for this face that is perfectly straight on to us. Uh, so let's give it some more depth by, by turning the head slightly. Um, much of this stuff is just blocked in. It's like that's the idea of a gate, but it's not, um, it doesn't have any interest. Like, you know, do you want to curve the ends up? Can it have uh, some, something posted on it? Can there be that? Can there be some older stuff hanging down? Can there be like a little shrine on the top of it? Uh, there's, there's lots of ways that you could, you know, add stuff to that to make it a, it's a bit more interesting. Uh, the rocks are super basic, so let's make sure that those don't just like... And the rocks look very similar. They're just... Those are very odd shapes of rocks, like nipple rocks. I don't know. Yeah, can, we, can we find something more interesting than that? Or even if the, the rocks all just kind of pointed in, like he's got a series of rocks that all like point that direction. At least there would be a kind of a continuity to it. Um, he's got like baskets of fruit or food or whatever. That's fine. Yeah, it makes sense. If that's his position, he doesn't get out to shop, then maybe people bring him food for guarding their village. That's cool. Um, yeah, you've got this gold kind of coming down his back there. Maybe we continue that just with some gold coloring. This sort of goes off there. And maybe it continues and sort of fades off, you know, down the tail. Uh, maybe he's got like gold, some little gold bands around where his paws are. And that way we have pops of color and just break up the, uh, uh, the brownness of all of it. Mm -hmm. Now if we do that, we may want to come in here like this and just have some... Know, some overlapping with the idea that there's maybe another tree over here. 
covering up some of that, giving some depth to the the foliage. I like that sort of feeling. Yep. 